New York and on the new Hot 97 app. Ebro in the morning on Hot 97. It's Ebro in the morning. Beautiful Laura Styles, uh, Rosenberg, and 50 Cent Yay. has touched down back in the main building of Hot 97. I can't believe it. <laughs> How did you feel walking in? I felt weird. I felt like something might have changed. <laughs> I felt like I said. I'm like, wait. So they let me come back to the why? Like, you go soft him? My building's across the street. Yeah. <laughs> like I belong over there. Like, <laughs> you mean the precinct? What is that? The building over there? Oh, the, the federal uh, building? Yeah. No, that's <laughs> not. He meant the twenty. He meant the other spot that we yeah. don't get address. Oh, the twenty fifth street. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think that the precinct. Yeah, but you give the address. I know. Yeah, I, I've, been, I've received <laughs> it's special on treatment for the, the majority of my music career. Yeah, yeah. I've had a, a special building. To Have we ever even ever clarified that? Shooting no, story, because no. yeah, yeah, it wasn't. You know, you know have, it wasn't. I have absolute faith in our judicial system. I believe in law enforcement. There you go. And I'm I'm sure someday they're gonna figure out what exactly happened. So that has never because people don't understand that there was not a shooting inside Hot 97. Right. Was that no. was not a thing. It was a snowy December. Crazy night. It man. was a legend. You know, you and Game was going through your... Game was not here. Right. Like, right. He was, yeah, was, was nobody here. here. You and the G-Unit was upstairs, and yeah, something happened outside on a snowy street that turned into... The 50 Cent The 50 shit. Cent game shit. And they just... What? Yeah. Yes. And, and to this day, random people who barely even know about Hot 97 would be like, oh, you work at the place where someone got shot. Oh, yeah. man. In the radio station. I'm like, what? No, that's not what happened. Now, no. there were shootings outside of the, the Mob D. Crazy. Kim thing. Yeah. The gravy thing, which was peculiar because he got shot in the ass, and we don't know yeah. if he did it himself or what happened, yeah. what actually <laughs> happened, or who he had problems with. We don't even know. But listen, now that when, once you have a hit, a bona fide hit TV show mm. on premium television, you come back to the main building. I okay? get the main building. Oh, yeah. Now, we, now this, is, oh, this is yeah, TV. This is TV. Good morning, America. Yeah. I was on all of these the, the view. I was on the view. Yeah, I saw you on the view. Yeah. In the suit. Yeah, yeah, I gotta get clean up for him. So let's talk about Power on Stars because uh, I it appears that you and Stars are okay. good and bad. Now, now we're good. See, like there's things you, you see when when a network is planning for you for people to identify with the success of the project, like for your consideration. You start to see those ads, mm -hmm. different things around. Like, it's a campaign that they create. And oh, you mean like things just pop up and they're just... Yeah, because their they show's doing well. And then... They push it for award season, meaning right. they, they okay. really want to put it in the forefront. Got it. And you haven't seen those things in connection to power to this point. So I'm looking going... And, they, and they're like, well, we're doing this. Like, I'm, it's already the second highest rated show on all the premium cable. Only behind Game of Thrones. And at the wow. at Game of Thrones at their final season now, so we're gonna top the numbers, and we're not. It's a third of what they spent on Game of Thrones. I mean, of course. Yeah, Game of Thrones. Is you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm yeah. shocked it was a third. That's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you gotta look and say, I'm. More, it's already technically number one because of what we spent on it, and the you know the things that they're receiving as far as the network is concerned. And I was I was uncomfortable because it didn't feel like that they were reciprocating that energy. And do you feel like it was a lack of understanding of the impact or like, because sometimes, you know, executives, they just don't understand the value of yeah, yeah. And especially I mean, of our shit. Yeah, it's different with our culture because they don't believe that the people are listening. So when we like, when I say turn it off, they turned it off. Like, like people was like, you're right. Ain't nothing else. I got only got it for this. So why would I be paying for it for the additional, the additional time period? It's six more months out of the year. Right, you, right. You know, like, if there's nothing else already there, then they go take take that back out of my head so I'm not paying extra money for that. Until it comes back, I'll hear when it's coming back. And So you so, yeah. you told viewers of power to take a knee. Yes. It's basically what yeah. you did. You told them to boycott stars. Well, when they did, they did when as soon as they turned it off, they respond, it's a fire drill. <laughs> Everybody goes, oh, no, let's let's get the... But then they realize, even the projects that I've offered them in the overall deal, that it's, it's been not moving at priority speed. Mm. So now everything is like fast tracked everything, like get this stuff done. And cause it's not what he's saying. It's not an issue about just the power series. It's, it's an issue about content, about having, it's, for me, it's having the ability to pick the, the other people for the next series. Mm -hmm. You know and, what I'm and saying? And with the and success, you should be given that, that opportunity. How, um, how proud are you in terms of things you've accomplished in your career? Of power getting to where it is. It's cool. It feels like Get Rich or Die Trying Again. It feels like, uh, you know, like the first album is the largest debut on record. And then the first TV show is the highest rated show on the network that you're on. And it gives you the influence 
that allows me to do what I want on the actual network. So it's and like, you built the network. I mean, it's it's mine, really. The Star Network, is, the influence like that, that I have in that building is cool. I don't want to bring you into my world of conspiracy theory. I think you're doing a great job. <laughs> you're becoming an executive and you're moving in that world. But since you're here in my environment, they don't like that. They don't like the fact that you have that power to tell the people. Influence Just like me. they don't like the fact that now other black players in the NFL are like, yeah, you know what? I didn't take a knee. Take a knee. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're, that the the uh, the structure as it was right. in America, the individual, the worker, mm -hmm. did not have that power. Even before I get to the race part of it, the worker never had yeah, that. Yeah, but power. I always work with people. I don't work for them. You see what I'm saying? Like I, I wouldn't take the job because I don't need that. You sound like I look at it every time I approach the situations. That's like I look at it like that's where me and Jimmy got off. Mm. You know what I mean? Because that, like when I saw, we made a lot of money selling sneakers. Jay, Sean Carter, Junior Shoe, doing stuff. And then he's going, speakers. And it's why we got these headsets on at the present moment. You see what I'm saying? And it's, when this when this is happening, I'm going, oh, like Russell. Like when Russell does Fat Farm, we do Junior, Sean John, we do Rockaway, we do a lot of, a lot of things happen. Following, he led, led us into that space. So I'm like, that's a cool space. I do SMS following that. And I experienced something that was really interesting during the time span of that. What happened? They, they treated it like I was a direct competitor. And it's how can you do what you need to do for the music when you feel like I'm your competing company? When, when, when you were doing what, they felt like you were a competitor? When I did SMS. When you did SMS headphones. Yeah, okay. Because you were signed to yeah. Interscope at the time, but yeah, decided but I, to start your own thing. Bought the right? whole, that whole company. Yeah. Bought the whole company. So they're looking and they're going... Because he's feeling like it's a direct competitor to Beats, they can't do anything the right way. This is why, like, my last album, I didn't even deliver my last album to, G, to Interscope. They let it go before it got bad. Because they were just like, this ain't going to yeah, work out. I, I, I was talking to Steve Berman. I told Berman, I was like, yo, listen, I don't know how to not respond to someone that I feel like is trying to hurt me. So I'm going to start trying to hurt people around him. And then it, it choked out. And are you are you out of a deal with them completely? Yeah, I own everything, all my masters, everything. Oh, you got everything. I, everything. So every stream is money in your pocket. Yeah. When does the when does the uh, the like uh, you know how now artists go around and they do like Fifty Cent performing the entire album, uh -huh. the G Unit. You know, are, are we gonna see the G Unit reunion tour? Are we gonna see the? I, I don't know. Like they they have to get it together. Like as far as G Unit is concerned, they got. Personality issues. Mm. They're grown men now, and it's different. So it's like they're moving at a different pace. It's like, look, it's earlier it was easier because it was me going, come on, we got to go, and you got to do yours. And it's like, 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 after the first record goes, Interscope is not saying, ooh, ooh, can we get a G-Unit record? They're going, no, we need your record, like your next record. This is why, you, look, there was the difficulty in identifying with everybody who was in the St. Lunatics and everybody who was in D12. And it was because the cycle went twice before you started to, they started to introduce the group. You know what I mean? Like they-, they well, You only went once. Right. I went, get Richard Die trying, and then it was June. And then squad and up, then, let's go. And it just happened so fast that it was like, yo, like the momentum from that record really sold those other records. And your guys got individually bigger than fast. those other ones than you're, that you're referencing. So because it happened so fast. Fast. They had solo albums that sold three million a piece. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so if you make the call today and you're like, all right, guys, time to get to work. G and reunion tour, let's ride out. It doesn't just form like Voltron and y'all off to the races? Only because they have, may have already booked the show internationally. And oh, got it. Their schedules. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. they're doing things you know, separate. You know. Right, right, right. But that's good. That's healthy but for yeah. them, though. That's very healthy. I, I, I realize I need to ask you this. Um, a prodigy from Mob Deep passed away recently. Yeah, yeah. You were yeah. obviously affected by it. T take us through, A, his passing and, and how that was for you, and then tell us a little bit about signing them and how you felt the whole Mob Deep thing went with your unit. Yeah, when, when Pete passed, I was like, I, I, don't, I didn't even deal with that the right way because I didn't... It was like, oh, we're... And I didn't know how to to actually deal with it because it was like so much, I'm watching everybody else response to it, like seeing what people, I was like, yo, it felt like, like when, when, like when Biggie passed or when somebody meant a whole lot to our culture passed away. And I, I didn't feel that energy prior to 
him. You feel what I'm like it was like a new CD came out because he passed away. Like mm-hmm. the, the boost, the energy that people had. Like, love me while I'm here. Don't love me when I'm gone. You know, yeah, what I'm I saying? think we all make that mistake, even in our personal lives, though. Yeah, but and it's just I felt that, and I was like, "Whoa, what's going on?" And then it was because uh, I was I was in in the south of France. I was in the south of France when they they called me. And I was like in a uh, had a tuxedo and stuff on, like in doing some stuff for uh, television. It was television and stuff, and they had a festival out there. And I had to stop to go outside for a little while and just chill because I was like, like. When I write a book, I'm writing with a writer. Prodigy and Tupac were very similar. They really art students that took on the theme thugging. Because it was too much, it was too advanced. The craft, the part of their, their, their development was too advanced for them to, to be anything else. You couldn't look at it like that. They had to live the part. Right. So it was like when you see. When the Summer Jam stage is on, you see P in the dance clothes. His, his mother had a dance studio. He was, he was cultured. You see what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it seems... Yeah, he wasn't just some guy who stumbled in off the street, started no. recording music. Right. He had been a writing trained artist. and, and he, he was in art. Yeah, and that was something yeah. that you could look at and go, ooh, because of the theme of Mob Deep. But in reality, it would mean that you've just been exposed to more as an artist. You know, and then... In, in Tupac's case, like in spare time, the guy is actually writing his his own book. He's writing the book himself. With like Prodigy would write his page by page, write the book, and I'm looking, going, I ain't doing that. I ain't got time to do that. <laughs> I got to tell him exactly what I want and then read what he wrote instead of sitting there doing page by page the whole thing and looking, going, okay, so you sit, you gonna edit this and proofread everything. I, I barely proofread my tweets, like or, or you, the Instagram notice. I go back and fix it. Mm. You know what I mean? But I write it as fast as the thought comes. You know, so it, it gives them a, a, a piece of me, like the entertainment portion of it, my character. Would you consider, was the Mob Deep time on G-Unit considered a failure or success? No, How it, do was you, a, uh, it was a success. Look, they sold more records. It was more exposure for them. Mob Deep had already made it to a space where the music business already knew what they were going to receive from a Mob Deep project. We're going to sell maximum 700,000 pieces. We get to a point where we do 500,000. It's a success. Every time the singles came out, they performed a certain rate. So we knew what... I knew what I was getting into when I got them. And that was something that... that was, and Chris, you and Chris Lighty... Chris, right. That was a... You know, Chris you know, Lighty was a part of that as well. This. Chris, what Chris did in the beginning, because Chris had, had his own issues. Like, he had... Uh, his overhead was going from from Def Jam at one point, and they moved to a new building on 25th Street, across the street from where Jimmy and was did on the same block, right? And there was a point that he paid me to be a part of that package because he felt like it would get picked up for my participation. So it was the Violated Compilation, where they made those fa- the art, the mm-hmm. faces, they had the, the Mob Deep album, and then they wanted to package the G-Unit you know, 50 Cent Solo and then the G on the piece, and that would be enough for him to get the label deal, which would provide the overhead and have him be, you know, because he was already a company that they recognized in our culture, that would be easier for them to make that deal. So we did that for 90 days, and after that, like, because we had went and met with everybody, but they didn't mention it because they wanted the overall deal. Then when M called, it was, like, so non-traditional. It was, like, Friday night. I flew out Saturday. I met with him. And I came back and I'm like, I'm doing this deal. Mm. I knew that like like Stout was advising me not to do the actual deal. He's like, yo, yours Wait, is the serious. shady deal? Yeah. This so we're talking 50 Cent original Eminem shady deal. Yeah. You were Yeah, because it, the Violet album's that long right. ago, the first one. So yeah. you was gonna go in that direction and made a last minute call to go in another direction. Yeah, and I ended up the And it all worked out, obviously. Yeah, but yeah. we ended up I ended up signing the deal with him. But the, the reason why it, it was happening like this, there's a lot of confusion going on. Because Stout actually did my first deal. He did, well, he did the deal to Columbia. Yeah, to Sony. Because he was managing the track masters in that period. Like, we went to Bearsville, we worked. Norby's the first artist to rap on a record with 50 Cent. On Power of the Dollar, on yeah. the EP. He did that, and he didn't have to. He was hot. He was hot at the time. It was like Norby in his heyday. Like, you scorching. Know what I'm like, he was like, scorching. And it was, yeah. it was ill, because he, he like, I, I have ill moments when I see people at different points because I'm looking like, yo, you really didn't have to do that. <laughs> like, that was... You know, Queens. 
I appreciate it, like, you know, in a different way. He look at me now, like, yo, I need you on the, I need you on the drink champs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> He's I'm not going to hesitate to ask either. Nah, he'll do it. And I'm like, nah, I'm coming. Like, when, when he asked me to do it, I was in Miami, and uh, but he called through for me to do it. I was like, nah, nah, tell him I'm going to come, I'm going to come. And he was like, for real? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nah, I'm coming. Because you think I forgot. Like, I didn't forget. Aww. Like, the cash money, like, I went on the cash money rough rider tour. I was I was going on stage before the curtains opened. Mm. Damn, Juvie was the man. Juvie was the one, man. Yeah. Out of that look, he had when he had that record, like he was like in the video, and he had like mad grease on, like he was had mad grease on him. We was laughing at it because it was like some country shit. We, yeah. New York music was different, so I'm, we looking like he got. I got a big body being high. Yeah. 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 He doing that, and then when the numbers came back, that wasn't funny no more. I was like, yo, <laughs> I need one of those for my life. <laughs> not for not for the culture, not for music, for my life I yeah. need that. Like, I'm looking at the record, and then... Who let you go do that? Was he, was Juvie the one who was like, you can jump on before us? You know what? It was it was Baby. Baby, this is why people don't understand. Like, the, when things get a little rocky with him, like with Wayne and them and stuff like that, it don't shift with me. Like even when me and Wayne is is going back and forth, that's hip hop, that's rap music. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? And then I, it ain't got nothing to do with when we run into each other, particularly with Baby. You know what I'm saying? He'll go like when it feels like nobody is rocking with you. I was like, yeah, yeah. it feels crazy to me because I know his passion for it. And you know no, what he's and you this know what he's done for he others. Was, yeah. He was able to stick around for a whole nother run when the second Bad Boy run starts. Depends when the second, look at it. I'm talking about the entire new roster. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Not yeah. another record, another group or crew. We got oh, oh some got moment. it, got it. Right. Yeah. Like, we can all put a hit on a boy, trust me. Like, they, we can find something that's right and put it up. But a whole second run. A whole another run is we different. Money, yeah. Are you taking shots at Puff again? No, no, that was, I, okay. I heard, where's, I heard where's, where's, Okay, where's no limit? True. There's so no every second, other, you're saying every other the only company. one. You're saying only baby, yeah, basically. Where's Death Row? Where's the new Death Row? Right. Where's you saying? No, He's saying. including everyone. Okay, yeah, yeah, I just yeah, wanted yeah. to make sure. Right, right. Just you wanted know. to make sure. <laughs> Dre's done it. Dre's done it many times, but never a full roster. It's one at a time. Right. It's, I said put a hit on the board. It's not as hard right. as building a whole new enough momentum to, to change brands. Like it's like if you come up with another record label name, new sound, and just come back as a, a whole new artist but with new life because the people around you are bringing new energy at the same Speaking time. Speaking of which, what did you think about your old nemesis, now y'all cool, uh, Fat Joe. Joe having such a fucking smash yeah, in listen, 2017? Let me tell you something. Check this out. He's focused. He's focused. When you go, look, I haven't seen him. He is a spot artist. He spots. I mean, he have a moment that you don't argue is... A moment within the culture, and then he goes back to doing something else. I don't know if it was other things going on that was, you know, pulling him away from it. But he's been completely focused while the rest of us have been moving to do other things at the same time. You know what I'm saying? So you see him put two, he got like three records. That that what's name record was hot too. The um, he put out, he had the one with Ty Dolla Sign. He had the one with Yeah Dream. Yep. yep. And all the way up. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's been banging, he's been hitting. Like, like and that you know, album was fire with him and Remy. That was really Remy, good. That Remy album was really good. And I think Remy's a part of that too, because Remy Ma don't, don't sleep. Our culture wants something new. Yeah, on female and they don't want want one girl. No. Of course. Two, that, it's been long. It's been a long time with just one girl. So Nikki's job would probably be to fight that off. Yeah, she goes. She she supported she Cardi B. She supported Cardi B yesterday. She celebrated Cardi B. We all celebrated Cardi B yesterday. Nicki well, tweeted in support. You know, another New Yorker. You know, enjoy this moment. That's you dope. know, they, that's there, there might have been. She's supposed some, to. She's supposed to because yeah. the. You know what? I think it's interesting, but I I think that that would be I don't, the competitive nature of our culture. We we started off competing. She she probably felt like there was a competition for a second and then said nah, because this is this. You see what I'm saying? Like, what it does is, amazing. what Cardi does is so so amazing for our culture. It means there is no rules. It means nothing. It's a wild, wild west out here. Yeah. Because Love and Hip Hop was the graveyard. Pretty it means much. if you saw you on there, it meant you was finished in our culture. She, she, it's, that was part of her saying? ascension. Like, her yeah. step up right. was that. Her going and she that, left at the right time, but too. But coming through that direction, 
it goes woke. So now it, it won't be the only one. Because the visibility of the show allows it to, it changes the, the whole perspective of the platform to me. Like, as far as Mona Scott and what she's doing with reality television over there. But she, you know, Cardi B finessed uh, Instagram nicely. Yeah, she did. Yeah. Whole culture, it's whole culture. The things that she was saying for shock value, that yeah. it connected the whole culture. And it was entertaining because they not familiar with people just saying those things. I think when Big was designing Kim, he was designing the hook. Yeah. A lot of times the, the things in the lyrics were saying, you got to have the money to fuck with me. Like, like that was the overall premise of the Lil' Kim format. And then when she, I think she, when that record she had did the, uh, with the jump off mm -hmm. with, with the Lost Boys, and I think it missed its mark because it wasn't as sexy as she, she was previous. designed. Hardcore was her base. That that's was, it. That like, was... that's when Kim does that, they can't beat her at that. She's better than the, all of them at that. You know what I'm saying? And I listen to the records. Like, I've heard things that she didn't even release yet. That is, um, well, you, you've things. heard new Little Kim records. Yeah. Like, well, I, then I knew now because how long ago I listened to them. But I, I've heard music from uh, that during the time period we was out running around, like in Vegas and stuff. Because she was out hanging out with Floyd and they played the music and stuff. She has some, she has some things. Like, don't. I don't think they just they just go home and just don't do it no more. Like they're doing it, they're just not releasing it as much because they want to make sure that it's it's a real presentation for the public. And then, I, for me, I, I think you gotta you take the shots. The old our old business would say sustain your your mystique or your mystery about you by dipping. You ain't see me at no point. Like if my music took off too far too fast for me to. Be out in the remember they say we we everywhere you never there. They couldn't pay me. They couldn't pay me to be there. Why would I go for free when they would pay somebody to be there? I pay somebody for Instagram to be there, right? So at that point you going wait. I went. My first album took off. I sold 1.7 million records in two weeks. I'm so, not gonna be in every club. No, nah, I'm not gonna be in the nightclub. My music will be there. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't be there. Right. They're gonna pay me. I'm in stadiums and sheds and stuff like that. If you going like, when the last time you see Jay pop up at a, a nightclub? And if he does pop up, there's no pre promotion at all. Yeah, it's it's you really recreational. Yeah, 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 fully recreational. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's that at that point, he's going to watch these people to see what's happening. Yeah, you got to see what's actually feel what's what's happening. Goes. It's almost research for what he's gonna do the next move. Were you happy about Jay's last album? Did you like how it sounded? I thought it was too smart. I yeah, you I like said that. Did. You said yeah. it was like it wasn't. It didn't connect, and I was like, no. "Who gives a fuck?" Yeah, look, I, it's in my car right now. You listening to it? I'm listening to the records. Yeah. I, I still like the records. I mean, it is look. But is it, I, isn't but isn't it great to have hip hop in that space where we, we still need we it. ain't got to give a fuck about what's nah happening. nah. You don't got to look and make the the record based on somebody else's record list. Yeah. You got, that's the more creative part of it. Like when you see these kids and make a record, it don't sound like nothing else is there, and it works. Then you have your moment, because there was no, there's no duplicate. We can only get that from there. Then like what, what Jay was doing on the record was is, it was more maturity in the actual music. He can take that out, because it's youth culture. Hip hop is youth driven, right? And as far as the lyrics are concerned in the actual record, this is why I listened to it because you. You can listen to Jay records for fucking Lord knows how long and then start picking up new stuff that he did. Because you heard it and you know the words, but you're like, oh, you see how he wrote that? Like, you know what I'm saying? How so when you, say, when you say it was too smart, it was too smart for what the traditional... No, no, no. Traditionally, it would have came in and been a quality piece of work. What it is right now for the, for the audience, the kids that are out actively now involved in the culture that are driving what's hot and what's not, you don't see how that went quiet quick? It had the best marketing campaign. You had 444 all over the place, but who you here playing it? Us. It's in my car. But you know what I'm saying? Like, but it's I think not what, we I all. Think with the, I think with Once the way consumption the happens now, though, I think with the way consumption happens now with streaming, right, mm -hmm. on people's phones, you're not going to see, like, that record, none of Jay's records are going to be club records. None of those records are going to be things that people with the window, I mean, even though I've seen people playing the Damian Marley, join the little wait, how, do you, or how do you gauge a hit record then? Me personally? Yeah. I look at a number of factions. I look at clubs. I look at streams. I look at Shazam. I look at, I mean, obviously we play it. I use my gut and be like, yo, this needs to be played. You know what I'm saying? Watch this, look, if you said. And then also with Hove or when you put out a record, you have certain marquee artists. 
that when they put out a record because of who they are in mm. our culture, they, it's going to get played. Like, it just... But it gets the airplay, like, the, expected to get the airplay. But what I'm saying is, as soon as those records, the hit records, if not all of the CD, there's something that is supposed to be made to play. You feel what I'm saying? Whether it's to play at radio, so it's a huge hit, or it's to play in nightlife and everything else there, it has to be, uh, or what is it? What is the record? Like, I don't know what would... Well, but I, here's the question. Why, at Hove, at, at Hove's point in his career, why does he need to be don't consumed need to do, by young people? No, like, if they don't like it... He doesn't okay. need to do... That's where you went wrong. Need. He doesn't. doesn't need it. He doesn't need to do anything. It's something additional, and it's, you know, for him to get back into his own. You think that goes away? Like, it doesn't go away. The competitive part of... the Look, the line that he said with the, the, the future line, why did he say that? Well, uh, put money to the ear. We don't call money. Call that money. Uh, this can you have your son no. playing? No, the other one. Your football. future. Oh it's, yeah, yeah, your son, yeah. Your son playing yeah. football with your stepdad in the future, or whatever. Yeah. That will I want. Why? I think it was a learning moment. No, about it's being just a parent. Hip-hop. It's a line. <laughs> it's a line, and I would have passed on the line. It was a, lear- it was a parental there learning. There was no moment. reason. There was no reason to do that. But so what? what so what was the reason? It's just the competitive side of hip hop. To be in right and now. It, and he, he threw the shot, just to throw the shot, because he's going to wait, they're going to respond to this. It's trolling. Right, it's like, look, it, you, don't want, you don't really want to say what it is because of how they perceive Jay. He wants to, you know, that boogie. Who, is this me? Uh, uh, no, he's trolling. Like, uh, he's trolling. <laughs> Could someone please bring us past the great poupon? You know? <laughs> Where's the caveat? Like, you know, you want to tell, look, tell us exactly, man, what you see in that face, man. You know what it is. No, look, I thought, I thought he'll it was- blame me. But New York City hip hop. Well, you, 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 it is your fault. He was the program director. You know, he did not I play support, that music. No, I supported you. This is who you. they should be looking for. I supported for. you. Oh, That's who they back for. It's oh, your fault. God. And then you threatened to have me beat up. And I was like, so what? Nigga, this is what That's it is. Good. You fucked up. Because I'm like, look, how you going to mess it up and then say I did? I know you played a party, bro. That's what he's saying. He just, that's what he did. He's full of shit. He go, look, the program, like, all of the artists that made records during that time span, you mean to tell me they didn't play because my records were good? No, they, no, a lot of them. They didn't play because the program a lot of, director didn't play. No, there play. was actually a lot of people who had hits during that time. A lot of people in New York had okay, hits who, during that who? time. Jim had hits during that time. Cam had hits during that time. Max B had hits during that time. Um, it's post jaw you're saying? Um, yeah, this 50 Cent G-Unit run. It was a lot of... Be- I mean, Busta, obviously, he's Busta, but he was Busta before that. Yeah, Busta, Busta always had his. You know, it, it, if he don't look like Busta Rhymes to me, it ain't gonna be a hit. <laughs> he's a visual artist. I always like to watch him... One of the best more performers than to, ever. To, to listen. Right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? So when that's yeah. what it... He just gotta go back and get himself... And by the way, and also during that time, we lost Stack Bundles, who was on his way. Stack yeah, Bundles yeah. was on his way. But but you said, look, the New York City hip hop died. I didn't shoot it. No, you no, no. did it. No, because you pulled nobody it apart. else can. You pulled it apart. You had everybody beefing with you. Anybody Mm-mm. did a record with Joe or Ja was it. beefing with you. No, listen. And you because pulled it apart. I, uh, At a time when we could have had Unity and everybody came, the marquee no, we artists, could not. not the new artists, the marquee artists hey, look, you know did what? not want to work Check together. this out. Listen, look. We could not have had Unity at that point. See, because. We had real, real issues going on. Things are different in that time span. So what happens is because John was successful first, people had already developed their relationships and had their, their look, Angie, Angie, I would watch her when we interview, and she would be uncomfortable. They played Monopoly together and stuff like that. I knew all of it. <laughs> Do you understand? Like, I look, and I'm like, I like Angie. She never did nothing to me in my career, but I know that they have the relationship, and I'm going, it was cool, every time we, we spoke, I look and go, and she loves Jay-Z, she loves Jay. Cause her, yeah, but you and Jay never, what, taste you, you music. And, but why you keep bringing up Hope? Why you keep bringing up Hope? I'm bringing up, you and Hope never really just, had a no, thing. we don't have no, no problem at all, that's because of Angie. Y'all rapping about sneakers she, together, that was a loved, great time. She had a relationship with Ja, and she had a relationship with Jay-Z, that I can visibly see that he was her favorite. Like favorite rap artist, the artist. You know what I mean? So she liked that, and it was like, okay, cool. It's a style. It's a different thing. Yeah, but like, if you, go, you like to operate from a place of everybody having problems with you, even no, no, when you I came in mind. this build, even when you came in this building, you was like, this feels uncomfortable because I like 
being banned from somewhere. <laughs> oh my god. That's the funk flex. No. It's a very funk it's flex a very quality. Flex, like I need an yeah, enemy. Like me against the world. Good. Everybody rooted for you, bro. You, you can know try to spin does. it how you want. No, no. Everybody rooted for it you. Does, you. Still do. It does provide a focus when you have that many people on the outskirts of it. Like if you don't have it uh, in business, if you don't have competitors, creative. Your competition, they don't, you don't have to notify them. Mm-hmm. Pick somebody that's good in the field that you're in and make that your competitor. Like, who's in your slot? That's the competitor. Who's the person that, that you feel like is sharper? Then watch that person and deliver. You know what I'm saying? If not, then you're not improving. Like, I looked at it go with, with, with even in Joe's case particularly, right? I, I always said Joe's loyal to a default when I make reference to him, because he was so loyal to them that he he had embraced their issues. Like, it would be like, and I would see, because the stuff that you're saying when no one's paying attention, I hear it. Because they say it, like, freely around amongst other people. Like, there's the, the circles, like, the people that were around would repeat it because you said it. So he got dragged in when he did the song with Ja Rule, and then all of right. a sudden you're, you became a problem breaker. And it, it was like, but it was really loyal to them based on the, the other record he did with Ashanti, the, uh, the, uh... What's Love? What's Love. What's love? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what's you know that? what I'm saying? And and it was like, he was like, yo, looked out, they had a relationship, and I was there. So when when they doing I'm From New York and all that, with Jada and them, I had to get them at that point because they were helping them. The problem was I liked the record. That record was fire. Super fire. You see what I'm saying? So when it came on, I was like, yeah, I got fucked them up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get them. Because y'all was supposed to stay away from him. You know, I did that issue. Y'all could, everybody could have And that speaks to the problem you were talking about. That's what I was talking right, about. Right, right. Yeah, but that's what that You was, could try to spin it and make it about new artists not breaking all that. I'm fine with all that. I was yeah. talking about the marquee artists not breaking. Yeah, but... Look. Or, or, I mean, not working together. Which opened the door because what happened was when all of y'all wasn't working together, the labels that was had offices here uh-huh. was like, this shit is messy. We gonna go find artists from other places that we can go and run up on the... What was the show they had on 106, uh, 106 and Parks and the, the MTV yeah. TRLs at the time or whatever because it was like, yo, this shit is messy in the streets of New York. Let's go break artists from other regions. And then we got ringtone rap. And then we got ready. Yeah, because yeah, I come one at a time. But the, the ill part is like, look, the irony of I'm it. I'm trying to promote 50 Central, and we still talking about oh shit. I know, that's I know. Thank 50 you. Cent. We already <laughs> on BET. 50 oh, Central on BET. We well, over there. Speaking of that, like when we get into you know 50 Central, Joe, like I had, he did something for, they shot a, a video for 50 Central. Oh, that's dope. And me, like, and it's because when we doing, I wanted to do things a little different. So like you know how you go through the live performance at Jimmy Kimmel's joint and stuff like that. That is cool, but I wanted to do something that's a little more artistic and have it stay in your portfolio. Like, because the artist, that, you can't get that back. That's, these things are going to be here after we die. So explain to you me know, what we're so, seeing tomorrow on 50 Cent. What's the format? Because I don't quite understand right. what I'm looking at. Right. You're going to enjoy it. It's a variety show because I'm, I'm able to change the formats a little bit, but you can see the, the overall premise. A lot of times when you say uh, 50 Central, people think, because they heard the word comedy, they think Comedy Central, but... When you watch it visually, you're going to see uh, Grand Central. Like Grand Central Station? New York City. Okay, Grand Central, all right, all right, all right. You know, instead of you know, the, the comedy piece. And then what I did to, to the actual show that's cool is like, they, there's a lot of cool sketch comedy that's done. You got an amazing cast. I got uh, Jasmine Brown. Like almost like in Living Color sketch, like SNL sketch. But it's, it's. Yeah, you can make that comparison because. That, that show was so impressionable in that time period that I, it's flattering for you to say that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I, it's just tough. But that's like saying, you're like, I'm Tupac. I would never say that coming right, behind right, Tupac. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, yeah. I say, nah, like, I'm, I'm cool. <laughs> you know, you don't want them shoes as big shoes to wear. You know what I mean? And, and they're right, always right, greater right. in their absence than they are in their presence, people in general. You know, so... Will you I, take shots at Donald Trump on this show? Yeah, well... It's it's so current that you you'll probably see something to. from it. Yeah, but they it's I feel like they're doing it so much like on SNL and different places that, that you don't want to like over. But it's over, so much yeah. new material every day. I mean, every day this guy. No, and he's gonna be material. different coming his, from your cast too. Look, his presidency is an accident. If you were a president by accident, you might do some of the things Donald Trump is doing. Like it's <laughs> like he wanted to. Be, I look. I believe. Listen. You know Donald Trump. You met him before. Yeah, I I think he was doing that 
to build his profile for a bigger deal on television and everything else. It's why Buff is doing Rock the Vote with no involvement in anything. He's just catching to the campaign and going. I run New York and run a marathon. I can run a marathon now. You start running casually in the morning until you can... You're going to feel those old wounds, though. Those old wounds going to come back. You but you get, it's not a difficult it's promo. Term, it's, pro, it's, yeah, it's, it's setting up for promo. Don't, just, let him, don't let him run a marathon. Oh, God. Did you, do, do you have a story? Do you have any personal memories of Trump from back in the day? In the club? Now, or I didn't like even that? know he's who he is now. I didn't even know that about him like that much. Like, just interacting. Basic, hey, how you doing? You know, I'm doing things in real estate and television and stuff like that, like The Apprentice and all that. Well, you didn't like know that. he was a terrible guy at the time. Yeah. You just it, thought he was... Now you can kind of see the complete viewpoint on him on things because it's, it's kind of... Let me it's ask obvious. you this. I don't think anything has divided people as fast as this is. Let me ask you a question because you are a professional heel. Mm -hmm. You like being the bad guy. And if you look at Donald Trump's history from even The Apprentice, you're fired. Bad guy, right? Mm -hmm. He's always been the bad guy. I saw a clip of him on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I don't know if this has been yeah. so he wanted to be the bad. He even said in the clip, people always dislike me. Anyway. Like, he's always owned. And I think that's part of his childhood, too. Like, he was the nerdy, fat kid that, you know what I mean, <laughs> come from a rich family. He was fat, and he couldn't get any girls and shit like that. So now, you know, he went and got mail order brides and started when he got rich, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But he's always used to being the bad guy. You as a professional, Hill, do you think that he is, this is really him? Like, who we see, these are really, or he's playing to his crowd. And he, no. and he doesn't have to give a fuck about anything else. I think this is him. You know, because it, it would have been, it's enough time to make the adjustments. Enough time for people. They're not not telling him what, don't say that. Or at least they're trying. He's not listening. Yeah, it's like, it, you can't, he's not going to do it. He's like, what? And what are you going to tell me if I do it? You're going to fire me? Mm hmm So? <laughs> so you understand? Like, if, they don't, if they don't put Donald Trump in jail, or if he doesn't lose money, he doesn't give a fuck about anything. Else. <laughs> He's not going to jail. Well, he only hates when his ego gets bru bruised. But that's he what I'm saying. Like even that. if he gets impeached, no, he can blame someone else. And if they don't put him in jail or take money from him, like in a real way, I don't think he gives a fuck. No, he just cares if you say you don't want to be his friend. Like, 50, if 50 came on and was like, I don't want to be Donald Trump's friend, he might respond to that and be like, I don't want to be your friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like they asked, they asked me to, to, to go to... Uh, Porsche, when Porter got elected, they was having issues with the African American vote. You don't say. They asked me to pay for five hundred. You wanted to pay me five hundred thousand as a part of the campaign to just make an appearance. Because, and I was like, Nah, that's not good money. <laughs> <laughs> nah. So you said no. You turned down Trump money. Thank God. Yeah, and I'm not gonna do that. Oh, thank and God. Then, it that's not worth it. No, nah, hell no. You would be just remembering me every time you look at me. Like, oh, yeah. you, you would have been getting crushed. Yo, too. Kanye, yeah. yo. Me and Kanye not good. I mean, I had to call Kanye. Cool. He, you up in the Steve Harvey? Oh, he ain't talked to me. Kanye ain't talking. None of them motherfuckers talking to me. Uh -huh. Y'all ran up in the man's lobby. You couldn't even get a real meeting. He played y'all so bad. You went to his crib. He didn't even put you on the calendar at the White House, and you thought you was getting a real presidential meeting. No, you no, went no. to the crib right he up made here. A, he made a, an appearance at the Trump. Yeah. Marketing. Yeah. For the Trump. This that has nothing no. to do with. What you're saying to me. It's just come see me and promote the, you know. The dog and pony You can show. see the president. You and Floyd yeah. talked and, after his 50th win? Lobby. You and Floyd talked after yeah, his 50th win? Yeah. Like two days ago, he just he was on FaceTime, just passed away. You know. like, he'll call every now and randomly. Do you think, did him well, and now you got nothing to do. He's going to call you every day. You don't <laughs> yeah. want to be on one of these new TV shows. Like, <laughs> did, no, him and, did him and Connor love each other secretly? I think no, he loved Connor. He really didn't like him. Really? He really don't. I really, we assumed they were just kind of playing, the whole thing was a setup. Nah, because he was going, wow, I got to do what I got to do. Like, all that, he getting away with saying, touching his head and all that, that ain't Floyd, not like that. Mm. So you think Floyd really did enjoy fucking him up? He, I, I know, look, he went to the sports book to bet $3 million on himself knocking the McGregor out. That's why I knew, I said, go get the money. <laughs> we go to he go he go kill him. He go, did you he go how much? Did you, how much you throw down? Did you I, bet? I bet yeah. You made I some nice money. I'm not saying nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> I said nothing. I'm gonna show them my taxes when Trump show them his. <laughs> Fifty Central tomorrow. BET. What time? 
10.30. 10.30 p.m. 50. Glad to have you back in the building. Oh, man, you know what? Bring a smoothie some morning. I'm happy to be back. I'm not particularly happy to see you. It's fine. <laughs> after it's what good. you've done to our culture. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. You know, everybody looks for a scapegoat. If I'm the scapegoat, okay, he gives me this new, I'm the heel. Yeah, no, nah, you I'm are. the heel. When did I the become guy. the heel? Oh, you been the bad guy. I thought I was on my toes. Your first record, I thought you I was robbed everybody shape. in the city. Uh, Niggas was one. mad from the first song. Yeah, but you... Not nah, yeah, but nothing, nigga. Nah, That's you always you. be adding extra shit to it, man. You make it feel different when you start talking. <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't never hear you say that to Jay-Z. Matter of fact, one time I heard you say something to Jay-Z and then you apologized. When? You apologized to Jay-Z? On the air. He when? said something. He when? had said something. You had never he came heard that. back and apologized later. Like, nah, nah you make it shit. Find the audio. I don't remember. That I'm going to get it. Jay-Z and them been mad at me since I made fun of them fighting in the elevator. Yeah. That, But no, but before that, you said something. And then apologize. Nah, hell nah. Stop. Because you wanted to get them back on stop the show. It, stop Because you needed them to come to the show. Which is what hasn't happened. Well, I don't, failed, I don't so. need a single interview ever. And he, I, but I appreciate but we you coming by. On you. I appreciate you. <laughs> no, listen, look, but look. if it didn't happen, guess what? No, me and you know, still be beefing Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something crazy. I don't, look, you know, look. 50 Central, 1030. I got his social networking. What I need to talk to you for? You don't. I go talk to my Instagram. Me. You love I me. I got the same. Secretly, mind. the only reason you fuck with me is because when you threatened to beat me up, I was like, "So I'm gonna take you out." Yeah. Like, the rest of these <laughs> niggas, I don't know. These other monsters you pay, I don't know about them. But me and you, we good. <laughs> Yo, listen. Tomorrow yeah. night, ten thirty. Thank you, Phil. Yo, Phil, give up fifty cents, man.